Hi everyone, my name is Bao and welcome to webinar Customizing the iTwin Viewer. This webinar focuses on customizing and extending widgets to the iTwin Viewer application, so I'm assuming everyone here already has a basic understanding of what the iTwin Viewer is. If you've never created your own iTwin Viewer application, you can get started on our developer.bentley.com website and clicking on the Getting Started tab at the top. This walkthrough has all the prerequisites linked to prepare your environment and help you get started on creating your very first iTwin Viewer application. And for those that need a reminder of what the iTwin Viewer application looks like or are just curious, I currently have a local iTwin Viewer application running with the code that comes straight from the Create React App template pointing to my eye model. And you'll notice we have some basic functionality like zoom, pan, and rotate. And when I mentioned adding widgets earlier, the iTwin Viewer comes with some default widgets that you can see on the right side of the iTwin Viewer application. And these widgets are generally used to interact with the eye model. You'll see right here I can expand to show elements in the eye model, as well as click on the eye icon to display or hide certain elements. So how do we actually create these useful widgets and add them in a way to make our application more meaningful and useful? And that's the main topic for this webinar today. It's to create and develop some of these widgets of our own and to go through some tools that can assist you in creating some very useful widgets. Just to give a quick summary of what we'll be going through today, we'll be talking about a review of the iTunes Viewer code, what exactly is a UI provider and how is it useful. We'll be creating our first Hello World widget with the UI provider. Then we'll go on and have a tour of the showcase and its widgets and learn about how we can take widgets from the showcase and add them to our local iTunes Viewer application. We'll finally showcase some useful applications that we've built with widgets directly from our samples. So let's start with number one, reviewing the iTunes Viewer code. We're going to now switch gears to our VS Code environment and start learning about the iTwin Viewer Create React App template. If you've already explored this template, you'll realize that this is mainly a React application since it does build off the Create, create React App template using the latest React hooks written in TypeScript. If you're familiar with Create React App, the index.tsx file right here basically renders the main app component under element root. So going back to the app.tsx file, most if not all customizations will start in the app.tsx file. So let's review what component app is actually doing. By default, the iTunes Viewer handles authorization for us. And this is handled in the first few lines of the app component uh, using the two state variables we see here called is authorized and is logging in. And these variables just check if you have access to the iModel you'll be targeting and handles the sign in and sign up button you see at the top of the iTunes Viewer template uh, right here that I'm showing on screen right now. So let's go back to the app.tsx file. Uh, so it initializes the authorization client and sets the state once initialized. And if we go further down, you'll see another news effect uh, calling a check to the environment variables imjs context id and the imjs imodel id. And these two variables are required to find out where uh, this iTunes Viewer application will be pointing to uh, once initialized. I have my environment variables already filled out in the .m file, so let's just make sure and take a look at our env environment file just to make sure we're all on the same page. This is the IMJS context ID and iModel ID filled out here, and you can get these on your my iModels dashboard page. Again, if you've forgotten why we needed these environment variables, the IMJS context ID and iModel ID are unique identifiers to let your application know which iModel to point to. The rest of the variables you can ignore. So let's go back to our app.tsx file. And scrolling down past these functions, you'll finally notice the React components that handles the actual rendering of the viewport and widgets you see by default when you first started the iTunes Viewer application. The component checks if you're logged in and if you are, render the Viewer component. Initially, this comes only with three props that we that are required, um, the context ID, the iModel ID, and the auth config. 
They're pretty self-explanatory, but I'll just reiterate that these are the three props we were setting up prior to this return call. So all this stuff happening before the render function. So how do we actually start customizing the way our application appears? Let's try to add a simple hello world span into our code. The viewer again is just a React component. So if I were to add some HTML elements above it or JSX element, uh, since we are in the React environment, let's add a div and add a span that says hello world. Close the div after the viewer component, give that a save. And let's go back to our application. You'll immediately see the hello world right above our viewer with some broken CSS styling due to CSS inheritance rule. But you can see that the entire viewer is just contained within that viewer component. This is, of course, useless because this hello world isn't actually interacting with our viewer. So we need to add an additional prop to our viewer component to actually start making it do useful things and interacting with our viewer. So let's delete our JSX elements, the hello world, and introduce a new prop called UI providers. So this leads us into our second topic, which is what exactly is a UI provider and how is it useful? If we go back to our documentation page and search for UI items provider, UI items provider are defined as classes and interface used to specify UI items provided at runtime, which can include toolbars, status bar items, backstage items, and or widgets. If we go back to our application, these widgets here are actually built in widgets that come by default with the iTwin viewer. And if broken apart, you can actually pass this as a prop into the viewer component. There are examples on how to implement the UI items provider here, but let's refer back to our Hello World tutorial and use the code there to provide our first UI items provider. For the first widget we'll be creating, we'll move our very simple Hello World span into a widget right above the component, uh, labeled here as the components tree into our iTwin viewer application. So let's go back to the code. So to reiterate, the UI provider prop takes an array of UI items provider that can provide additional buttons, widgets, status bars, etc., that will build on top of our existing user interface. Now that we have a basic understanding of what a UI provider is and the purpose it serves, let's jump to our third topic that is actually creating our first Hello World widget with the UI provider's prop. So let's go back to our documentation page, like I mentioned earlier, and jump to the Hello World Tutorials page. I'm going to scroll down and copy and paste code here under the my first UI provider.tsx that basically generates the Hello World span widget. So let's copy this code, go back to our source. I'm going to name the file the exact same file name, my first. UI items provider.tsx and copy and paste the code I just copied into the file, hit save, and let's explore this code a bit. I mentioned earlier that the UI provider's prop takes in an array of objects called the UI item provider. And here we're implementing our first provider, which will provide widgets. It doesn't need to provide widgets. Again, it can provide other items. And we can verify this by going to our documentation page and again, searching for the UI items provider. And you can see here, we can provide the toolbar button items, provide status bar items, provide backstage items. And the function that we're implementing is the widgets, the provide widgets function right here. Uh, which are the UI objects that you see on the right side of the iTunes Viewer application. So we're going to add a Hello World widget right here. So let's go back to our code. Jumping into the Provide Widgets function, we need to specify the location of where our widget will be placed. When the UI Items Provider class initializes, it constantly calls Provide Widgets uh, until a match occurs based on the location and section of where 
the zone is currently at. If we jump back to the application, you can imagine the zone here as the left side of the viewport, the bottom side, and the right side of the viewport. And for each location, they can be further divided up into sections. For example, the start at the top right, the middle right here, and an end at the very bottom. So if we jump back to the code, you can see that we're doing that here, uh, where we specify the location to be stage panel location dot right and section stage panel section dot start. So at the very top right of our application, we're going to be placing the hello world span. If the location matches, we create a hello widget that needs to be of type abstract widget props. Going back to our documentation, the abstract widget props type can actually implement several attributes, but the main one we're concerned about is the get widget content. Uh, and it provides the type, the JSX elements that we will be filling out if the location matches. So if we go back to our code, you'll see that we label the, the ID of the hello widget as a hello widget ID. This basically uniquely identifies the widget in case you, you were to use this somewhere else. The label, that's the little span that we see right here, and also the get widget content, so the actual JSX elements that we'll be returning in the, uh, the widget. So then we push this to the widgets and return widgets in the provide widgets function. Now that we have a basic understanding of what our UI items provider actually does, let's go back to our app.tsx and imp import our, our new class from my first UI items provider, the my first UI provider class, and have it initialized in our UI providers prop. So an array of, of my first UI items provider. Hit save and let's go back to our code. And we should expect to see our hello world spanned now at the top right section of this widget location, the right side widget location. So, so far so good. We created our first widget and provided exactly what we wanted, but you can see it's really not doing anything too impressive in our viewport, although it is embedded as a widget. In the tutorial, we actually create a toggle that changes the background color. So just to demonstrate that, let's add another widget in the same UI items provider. If we scroll down here, let's copy and paste the background color widget. Go back to our code. I'm going to paste this right underneath. I'm going to import the necessary variables and I model app and color def and also copy and paste the missing two static variables that I'll need right here at the top you can explore what this code actually does, but essentially it does the same thing. Um, it specifies a location, again, right and start. Let's change the start to end and stage panel location to left, just to see um, that we can specify easily where it goes. And the get widget content just renders a, a toggle component, basically, that swaps the color. So let's save that and see where our new widget will appear in the iTunes Viewer application. So right here, you can see the new toggle that we created in the same UI items provider with the location left at the end. At the end, there's there's nothing, you know, there's nothing here to start in middle and end. So it just goes here. And if we click on the toggle, you'll notice the background color turns blue. And we still retain our hello world widget. So again, we can keep adding and adding more widgets in the same UI items provider, or even add new UI items provider that may append to the UI and modify the other widgets, status bar items, backstage items, etc. You can really see the potential of the UI items provider in helping you build a very useful application. And these are extremely extensible. You can use these in several different ways and in any way you can imagine.
So you may now be wondering if there are some widgets you can use and learn from. And this takes us into our next topic, which is about the sample showcase on itunejs.org and how it can be useful to you. You can get to the sample showcase by going to our documentation page and clicking the samples tab. And to give a very quick tour, you can see that the sample showcase demonstrates a variety of APIs developed specifically for the itunejs library which all come built in in the iTunes viewer. Everything from visualizing a very simple 2D viewer to global and reality data. We have these samples grouped into categories that define the types of APIs they're using, such as viewer features, UI components, UI trees, etc. If you go down further in the viewer features, you can learn a lot about the camera paths, classifiers, exploded views, IoT alerts, particle effects, etc. Basically, a whole bunch of cool features that you can use in your own iTunes Viewer application. And something really cool that uh, you may have mentioned, um, you may have caught on if you've already used this sample showcase, is that there are widgets that serve as controllers for every single sample. So you'll see a widget here, controls this classifier sample. If we go to the camera path, you'll see a widget here that controls the train path. If we go to the emphasize elements, you'll see the widget to basically control the emphasize elements uh, sample. So you get the idea. Basically, every single sample has its own widget that can control uh, the, the sample itself. So what exactly does this mean? Well, Believe it or not, these widgets are all UI items provider, just like the ones we implemented from our Hello World and Toggle widget uh, sample in our iTunes Viewer application. So we can actually take the same exact widgets from the sample showcase, modify and develop them, and use them in our own iTunes Viewer application. So let's pick one that can be useful for our local viewer. I'm going to go back to the viewer group and click on the view attribute sample. This view attribute sample can be pretty useful. Um, it demonstrates a variety of view features that, uh, that showcases you know, the view attributes you can apply to your eye model. We can give this a wireframe look. We can turn off the background map. I'm gonna go back to smooth shade. Let's give it some shadows, but basically you get the idea. This widget is a controller that applies all these view attributes. And let's say we want this in our own iTwin Viewer application. So how do we do this? This takes us into our next topic, which is how to import widgets from the sample showcase into your own iTwin Viewer application. So each sample is first prefaced with a readme that explains the purpose and description of the performing API. And above it, we have a series of files demonstrating the code for the API. You'll notice a very similar name at the top here called the view attributes app.tsx, primarily this app.tsx portion. And at the bottom of the file, you'll see the very familiar component, the viewer component with our favorite prop passed in, the UI providers prop. Hopefully you remembered this prop. And as I mentioned before, these UI items provider are very extensible. The UI providers prop passes in an array that initializes the new view attributes widget provider. So if we take a look at the view attributes widget file, scrolling all the way down, you'll again see the very familiar UI items provider interface being implemented here and following the exact same pattern, calling the provide widgets function uh, initializing the widget with the location, again, specifying the right side with the get widget content function, returning the view attributes widget, which is defined at the top here. So given our prior knowledge, let's take the entire widget and add it to our local iTwin viewer application. I'm going to start by copying the entire file of the view attributes widget.tsx file, going back to my local source and declaring the same corresponding file name called the view attributes widget.tsx. 
Let's paste the code that I just copied into the source, save it, and you'll immediately notice that VS Code is complaining about a missing view attributes API.ts file. And this file defines the API of our specific sample. So again, the view attributes widget.tsx defines the controller of what's actually being controlled uh, based on the sample and the view attributes API actually performing the action for the controller. So let's take the view attributes API.tss file, copy the whole file, and going back to our local source, declared the view attributes API.ts file, and paste the entire code in here, give that a save, and we're good to go. One last thing we need to bring over, if you were paying close attention, that there is a final view attributes.scss file that we need to bring over that controls the styling of our widget. So let's copy this over back to our source, called, call it the view attributes.scss file, and we're simply going to paste the styling here, give that a save, and finally, before we add this to our UI pro provider's prop, let's make a minor modification. Let's say that we don't want the view attributes widget provider uh, location to just be at the right. I'm going to also specify the section to be at stage panel section dot end. So at the bottom right of our application. So let's go back to the app.tsx and we're going to do the exact same thing as we did with the first UI provider. We're going to import the new view attributes widget. Get the class view attributes widget provider. Go all the way down and go back to the UI providers prop. Extend it. Don't get rid of the my first UI provider. Uh, instantiation, let's call my uh, new view attributes widget provider. Let's give that a save and then go back to our application. And we should expect to see the view attributes widget at the very bottom right, right here. And if I were to click on this, the exact same controller right here. You'll see that it's fully functional. You can toggle on the background map. You can change the map transparency. I toggled it off. You can turn off grid, change it to monochrome, turn on shadows, turn off the sky box. And you'll also notice that the old widgets that we have here are also still functional. So if I were to change the background color, it'll still get the blue and we still have the hello world span. So everything behaving as we expect. So hopefully by now you have a good understanding of what a UI provider is, how you can implement and develop them, and how the sample showcase can assist you in creating your own useful iTwin viewer applications. Of course, we take this into our own practices, and for the last topic, I'm just going to quickly showcase some solutions we built using the iTwin viewer. This application right here was for a wind farm, and you'll notice we have widgets that show the graph of the total power generated and the power prediction. This particular UI items provider also shows markers, which demonstrates, which is demonstrated on our samples. So please explore our samples here to get a better idea of how you can create your own. We also have widgets that can zoom into areas of interest and display IoT data triggering alerts that can protect drivers from incoming danger for this particular tunnel. We have widgets that can show energy efficiencies of offices and categorize them using icon markers and widgets that can show live electrical data and even water and usage data basically of entire cities. So all these are new, uh, built using the UI items provider that I taught today. The list goes on and on and from here, it's really up to you to decide what you're willing to create for your own iTunes viewer application, given the knowledge that we learned today. There are endless possible ways to customize your iTunes viewer. It isn't just limited to using the UI items provider, so please feel free to experiment and learn on our iTunesJS.org documentation pages. 
visit our samples often. You can learn a lot from these. I believe this ends my portion of this webinar. Thank you everyone for listening. I'll now pass it back to Jason.